My name is Tarmac, and this is your Game Industry News Wrap-Up for the week of May 27th, 2017. Rumors of a Super Mario Cross with Ubisoft's Rabbids have turned real with a few leaked details that came to light this last week. The roster includes a bunch of Mario-dressed Rabbids, along with Nintendo characters like Mario himself, Princess Toadstool, Luigi, and Yoshi, who are all sporting some pretty impressive artillery. Mario looks like he's using a reskinned version of Mega Man's cannon, which has some gamers more than a little confused, as with the Fire Flower, I always saw him more as an inspiration for Ryu from Street Fighter. Still, Rabbids games are fun and ridiculous, so why not? I think that Luigi's Dyson vacuum gun could use a rework, though. Overwatch has had its one-year anniversary, and Blizzard celebrated in kind with the release of its next event block. The anniversary event includes three new arena maps in the arcade for some solid dueling action, and according to Blizzard, the largest ever release of new legendary skins, which are received as normal from event loot boxes. As it turns out, though, this is the most expensive Overwatch event yet, in terms of the credit cost of all of the items, which have been getting steadily more expensive as time goes on. For the anniversary event, it would cost over 56,000 in-game credits to unlock everything if you were buying it all that way, whereas the previous event, Uprising, was just over 36,000 with only about 10 fewer items. I've made my view on Overwatch loot boxes pretty clear by now, I think, so I'll just say this. I miss the Blizzard that put its players first instead of their wallets first. The game has made over 1 billion in revenue so far, so feel free to come at me with the standard, entirely community-manufactured defense that they need loot boxes for the ongoing support of the game. Just know that you're wrong, and that this was decided for the shareholders, and nobody else. The Kerbal Space Program community has been alight with rumors that a bunch of developers from the Mexico team working on KSP have been picked up by Valve as new employees. Being the quintessential spaceflight and launch simulator, Kerbal Devs going to Valve raises a significant number of questions about what kinds of projects they may be working on with Valve, or whether they're just integrating into the normal Valve projects that are already going. A Valve rep confirmed that some KSP devs did join Valve a little while ago, and that news of what they're doing would be released soon. My guess? HTC Vive Space Travel, or Steam Curation. At the very least, Valve is likely going to be paying them quite a bit more than the $2,600 a year they were making in Mexico, which is already a hell of a lot more than Kerbals get paid. This story kind of came out two weeks ago, but it's had a bit of a resolution and I should probably talk about it. Wargaming, the developers of World of Tanks, released a pay-to-win tank designed to incentivize purchase of their high-damage premium currency. Not the first, by the way, either. And just having said those words makes me feel like I need a shower. Per the norm, their community contributors, gamers who make content based on World of Tanks, got a hold of it early and started putting out reviews. Sir Fosh, a YouTuber, made a very critical review of the tank and was subsequently stripped of his community contributor status, along with a threat of copyright takedown against his channel if he didn't remove the video. Now, let's be clear, a review is one of the protected exemptions of fair use or fair dealing. So while the threat was without legal teeth, Bosch removed the video and decided this was a good time to tell the community about it, all in his own. Wargaming, after having attempted to double down on their threats by acknowledging and confirming them publicly, even attempted to defend the action, having decided that the negative PR was too much, and later issued an apology to Sir Fosh. It would have been nice if they elected to, I don't know, not be copyright trolls threatening actions they cannot legally justify, to take on and abuse the YouTube copyright system, but an apology is better than a kick in the junk, I suppose. On the plus side, the tank will be removed because it was a clear pay-to-win mechanic, right? Or nah, it's still in the game. This is my surprised face. And finally, a nice positive story to end the news on. CD Projekt Red has announced through its Q1 financial results that The Witcher 3 sold better in quarter 1 2017 than it did in the same period last year. It's almost unheard of for a single-player game to have sold better long after launch and while it's worth noting that much more content exists now with the Hearts of Stone and Blood and Wine expansions, the base game was already incredibly content heavy right from the beginning. What this indicates to me is that if a developer takes the time to build an amazingly detailed world packed with handcraft content through and through, focusing on the player's experience as the most important factor of design, they can create the elusive unicorn in the video game industry. All of this without small-scale DLC, no microtransactions, no loot boxes, card packs, and timed unlocks. A mature experience built for and by adults, not a mature rated experience built and marketed for teens, can be immensely successful. 
I look forward to what CDPR has to show at E3 this year and every year to come if they can keep up this pace of development. This gamer-focused mentality is something to hold on to. Well, that's not entirely true. They do have card packs, but they made a totally separate game to put those in. It's called Gwent, and it's in open beta right now. Your game releases from May 28th to June 3rd are as follows. Star Trek Bridge Crew, a game I wish wasn't exclusively on VR but is exclusively on VR, will be releasing on May 30th. You control one of the bridge crew members on a spaceship shouting, She cannot take any more, Captain! Engage! Wichter, Wichter! and other Star Trek-y phrases at your friends or random people online. The texture quality is a little bit low and the controls seem a bit on the simple side, but damn it, I want to play this! In any shirt other than red. On May 31st, we'll see the release of a little indie title put together by Smack Games and published by Mode 7 called Tokyo 42 on Windows, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. I've been trying to come up with the best way to compare it to games you might have heard of before. It controls like N+, in three dimensions with guns and one-hit kills, combat that's a mashup between Hitman Stealth and the Matrix battle scenes, all with the rotating camera from Fez. Continuing the long legacy of Bandai Namco fighting games, Tekken 7 releases on June 3rd for Windows, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. The game has been out in a few iterations in arcades, going back as far as 2015. I'm excited by the mere mention of Tekken, including my personal favorite, Eddie Gordo, also known as Button Mashing Fluidity. It's worth mentioning, though, that Tekken 7 will be protected by Denuvo Anti-Tamper, so take that into account. If you don't care, I don't care that you don't care. But I do care, and my caring directly relates to content in which I care, communicating that I care. This has been your Game Industry News Wrap-Up for the week of May 27th, 2017. Before you click away, I need to let everyone know about a slight change with the feedback loop. The structure is remaining the same, but I've been getting some comments from people who want to tune in live on twitch.tv slash tarmacgaming, but don't want to be there for the whole stream or guess when the monologue will be happening. So, I've decided to move the feedback loop to the beginning of the live stream. If you want to see it live and maybe chat afterwards, all you should need to do is follow me on Twitch and show up at 7 p.m. MST on Wednesday, and we'll be starting it, you know, right away instead of getting to it later on. Hopefully this helps. Feedback loop topic for this Wednesday is on nostalgia. Good, bad, or neutral. So, drop your comments and questions down below here, Twitter at Gnomecast, or on Discord. My name's Tarmac. Thanks for watching.